Happy Friday, everybody. How's everybody doing? Hopefully, everybody's having a good morning, getting ready for the weekend. Good to see you, Lawrence. Good to see you, Benito. Everyone? Bonnie, everybody? All right. Good to see everybody. Nice to see you, too, Rich. Ken, good morning. All right, guys. So, uh, what the hell is going on? We're down 700 points this morning. All right. And you had a blockbuster, an absolute blockbuster job report. Blue the numbers out of the water by a hundred thousand jobs more than they expected from analysts. That let me tell you, if we didn't have the coronavirus, I could almost guarantee, and I hate to use that word, the, the Dow would a bit would probably be at thirty two hundred. I mean thirty two thousand. Definitely at thirty two thousand. Um and I and I told you this a long time ago. There's nothing that We'll take down this uh, this uh, this market other than if we had a catastrophe and you're witnessing it and I'm bringing it up again. And, you know, I talked about that so many times. So um, the you know, I, I've been listening to a lot of analysts and watching a lot of TV. I always do my homework early before we start up in the morning. And, uh, you know, listen, the, the big difference is listening to what they say and what we do every day is pretty similar. But we see. We're, we're, we're like the Marines. We're the first people that go in and we know exactly what's going on. And then we report back to them. And, um, you know, just like when I was on uh, I was on NASDAQ, I told you yesterday and, uh, you know, I was at the NASDAQ Center and I was on their show and they would ask me, when is the bottom? And I'm telling you when the bottom is. The bottom is when we got the worst of the worst of the worst news uh, out there. And then then, you know, that's that's when we're going to know we're going to hit the bottom. OK, when you have the worst of the news and it's not going any lower, that's what you have to look for. But overall, you know what this listen. Uh, obviously, this is a serious problem with the coronavirus. I mean, it is so damn contagious. I mean, beyond contagious. Uh, they said there was somebody here uh, in New York and Westchester, uh, which is, you know, terrible. They said that. Uh, uh, an, uh, an acidic Jew uh, uh, went to a, a got it. He gave it to his family. He gave it to he gave it to his driver that drove him to the hospital. Okay, and then he went to a bar mitzvah, and he, and now everybody in the bar mitzvah has got to get checked for it. I mean, it's that contagious. It's just absolutely. They actually closed the school down because of it. Uh, you know, because the kids have it. So obviously. You know what? You know, we, we keep joking around, blame the Russians. We got to blame China. I mean, they're the ones that actually where where it came from. And I'll tell you, it. I think this shit's going to hit the fan when it comes to that. But the thing that we got to be concerned about is what we're going to do with this market. OK, uh, we got to be, be we got to be careful with this market. The market is factoring this all in. You know, we had a big rally on Wednesday because they liked the outcome of the Super Tuesday. But, you know, the, the market doesn't like, you know, uh, you know, doesn't like when to see stuff that goes like this regarding about the coronavirus. So, you know, we're seeing some pretty scary stuff. So a lot of airlines are getting crushed. Um, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, you, you know, you, you, the the cruise ships are getting crushed. I mean, all I could tell you this is that don't hold overnight positions and you better have a lot of cash laying around. I told you this a long time ago. Uh, one of the biggest, most successful, and the most amount of money I've made in trading was back in 2008 when the bank uh, crisis uh, uh, kicked in. I mean, I did made a lot of money on other, like you know, 9/11. Unfortunately, when the market was down 2,000 points and opened up the next day, but that you know, and it was just sitting there. That crisis happened over the period. I think it took like two, three months. That just kept going down and down and down and. Down. And when the worst of the worst of the worst came out, uh, and you know I talk about this in my classes, you know, uh, regarding about, but I'm not going to bore you with it. That's when you know what to buy. So I'm just telling you guys, I hope you got a lot of cash laying around because there's going to be some screaming, screaming buys, screaming buys. Uh, Josh says OPK is uh, is running. OPK is that what it was? Oop, I spelt it wrong. OPK. Oh, there we go. Uh, yeah, we got a nice little, nice little pop right there. You know what? That was actually number four on my list, Josh. Thanks for sharing that. So uh, let's talk about what happened yesterday because we had a lot of crash, uh, crashes going on. And uh, you know, at the end of the day, the only thing that we could have traded was the ETFs. All the ETFs 
And you know, I'm not a fan of them, but I did talk about that yesterday. All the ETFs had really, really nice moves, and they're also picking up after today. You could see, you know, all those ETFs, like here's some cheap ones, the VXX. This one went from 14 to 26. Uh, TVI, uh, TVIX, and, and and by the way, he's all going back on your list. His stock that was at 50 was at 132. You know, you got the triple shorts right here. Uh, you got the, the double short, uh, UV, UVXY, another big runner right here. I mean, there's a lot of good, good, good movers out there. Uh, and a lot of them are more or less are the ETFs. You could see these things just spill over from yesterday. Look, uh, UVXY is up almost 30%. When when does that ever happen? So all I could tell you this though, the Dow Jones, and I, and I said in the chat room, is at a pivotal point right now. It is at a very, very important level. We have to hold here. If we don't hold here, we're gonna have a major problem. We're gonna have a real major problem on the Dow. So uh this is at a major major support level i'll bring it up over here and i'll even show you what i'm talking about so let me bring up this um this this one right here so here's the dow and you could see right here that there's a major support levels right around 25,000, and uh you know right around here you can see it's right around there we're, we're holding that. that's why i was, was stuck here but if you go back another year ago and I bring it up, you could see it going back, or even back in 2018. Major, major support levels right around here, 24,000, you know, right around there. So we, we got a little bit of a cushion there, but, you know, realistically, this is really, you know, 24, 24,000 really is more, but, you know, I, I don't want to go past that. But it is a very, very major support levels. And if I even go back further, you could see how it was a major resistance levels uh, right there. But remember the Christmas crash. We made a lot of money right here. We killed it on the Christmas crash right here. But look at that drop. This Look at this thing, how much more drop, more than when the mar – uh, and remember, that Christmas crash was was in, uh, was happened because they closed down the market. So uh, they couldn't come up with a budget out in Congress. So this is a lot worse. All right, so let's keep an eye, close eye on that. Now let's go through the watch list because there are some nice little movers out there. We got some ETFs that are moving. I don't need to go through the list. It's it, it, it's endless. You got the, I mean, they're right here. You got you got the VTIX. You got the UVXY. Just uh, you look every single one of them, 18%, 13%, all of them. They're all right there, and the biggest percentage gainers. It's just like it's endless right there. Just remember what about the the, the reason why I don't like trading ETFs is because they, number one, they trade very fast number two it's very kind of hard to find some of them with big iceberg orders so you know those are the two things you got to be uh be cautious about all right so stocks that we're going to watch also as a little bit of brand name stocks you know obviously we know about the ino listen we talked about this stock this stock is this is a nasty stock it has some nasty shakes listen if you're going to trade the stock just don't trade too many shares of the stock the stock is very has some wild shakes just wild i know um I mean, I'm looking at it right now, and there is a – there's like a 60,000 share seller. And I know Ben kind of posted up that link, too, on that one too earlier. But there's a really big iceberg order right around $11. So kind of tested. You could see it. It kind of backed right off and went down to 1040. But he's still out there. There's uh, about 60,000 making up, and there's even a 13,000 at, at uh, 11. 1110 so that one's moving also just keep an eye on that big iceberg order if it does go higher but she is looking a little strong now there were these other stocks that were moving and um you know they they look pretty good earlier i mean this stock we've been, we've been watching it recently she's uh, she's gapped up but kind of flatlined a lot of volume though traded look over look at the volume on the stock 3.5 million shares already traded alt very familiar stock we traded this stock also she's up a little bit too this morning too about five percent two hundred thousand shares it's got some decent ice iceberg orders in that one opk is another one which is the one you guys were talking about earlier this one is actually moving really really nicely i don't know if uh nine o'clock it was at 240 look where it is right now 290 guys should be cashing out right now and taking the money come on I, that, I mean, since since we started, you guys should probably made about 30 cents on that trade. Great call, 7.7 .7 million shares already trade, and the and it's not even open the market. This is pre-market. You imagine when the market opens up? But listen, money's money at the end of the day, so take the money and run. CY, and this stock is getting destroyed. 
Okay, your stock's down 13%, 7 million shares already traded. No mercy for this one right here. You know, was a semi, uh, semiconductor, Cyper Semiconductor. That one's getting crushed. All right, now, listen, uh, airlines also. Listen, I, I, I own Delta. Um, I bought it two days ago, uh, uh, yesterday. I didn't buy a lot of shares of it. I didn't buy a lot of shares of it. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go under the wing of, uh, you know, uh, I'm gonna go under the wing of uh, Delta and see. I, I like it. It's a great company, but, uh, but these stocks are getting crushed because of it. I do not like AO. I do not like this company, American Airlines. I tell you, I, personally, I, I flew with them, you know, 10 years ago. I had a bad experience flew with them five years ago. And uh, I'll tell you a funny story about AO, uh, American Airlines. Who goes in a plane and you sit there and the center console still has an ashtray in it? That's how bad American Airlines was. I never said, like, this is, a, this is ridiculous. I had no choice, but could you imagine being on a plane and just, I was going from here to Chicago for a meeting and there was a, a there was a, the mini, mini, mini ashtray, you know, right in the center console. I'm like, I don't love to fly that company again. Obviously, you also know about everything else that American Airlines had, about the guy punching the thing. I mean, just whatever. That's how you know when you have a good short, you know, bad publicity. Really crushed the stock. But anyway, this thing's out by 50%. What else is out there? JetBlue is also getting crushed. JBLU. Look at that. 21 to 13. I mean, they're almost down like 50%. You know what I mean? I mean this is like really UAL, United, 80 to 51, 95. I mean, like, you know, listen, the, the two really good companies in the U.S. companies are obviously Delta and United Airlines. But um, I, I would keep a close eye on, you know, they're going to take a big hit. But um, these these two st these stocks are obviously when the mark comes back, I would be really focused on these two stocks. Obviously, you can see this one. It didn't go down terribly. It went from 62 down to 45. But it's it's got a hold here right around these prices. Uh, what else we got here? I got two more stocks. Easy. Um, ENZ got a little bit of a bounce of 48%. I don't know what happened, but she kind, of, she kind of stopped right here. But she's testing. She's right around here around this resistance levels. If she breaks this resistance levels uh, right here, she's technically right at the highs of October. But she breaks that high, that stock could break out. That's but she's really having a tough time getting there. She was at there early this morning, and then she kind of like flatlined here at 340. Last one, we all know this one, NNVC. She's going back on the list, guys. Another one. Um, She's kind of flat, but she's up 37% this morning uh, at 11. She's probably coming up over here. The stock, we, we, we traded at 2. It went to 18, back down to 6. This thing is really volatile. As we all know, just don't hold these positions overnight. Now, the game plan going into this weekend, listen, market's down 850 right now. Even with that big blockbuster deal with the not, the, not a deal, but the, the news that came out, 100,000 more jobs than they expected. Like I told you, I would have. Definitely would have predicted if we didn't have this coronavirus, we'll probably be at 32,000, maybe even 35,000. But if the, the market does not like what they hear with this coronavirus, it's extremely contagious, and you're probably reading about it. Um, it's going to take a couple of days. You know, it's going to take, remember, the, the, I told you this yesterday. The problem with the coronavirus is that it takes two weeks. The market does not like to be in limbo for two weeks. OK, it's not a really cool situation to knowing that you're in, in solitary confinement for two weeks and then, you know, what's going to go on uh, 24 hours. Different story. Two weeks is a long time. So we're gonna, probably going to have some crazy volatility. Just be all I'm going to say again. Just make sure you're in cash, guys. Just make sure you're in cash. You're going to get some screaming by soon. And uh, and believe me, you're going to need it. This is where you're going to make your money. So this is what we train for. So get ready. But we'll know because we'll, we're day traders and we'll be there. All right, guys, listen, good luck today. Happy trading. Don't forget, um, just really quick, uh, you know, up on the screen, you can see that today I'm going to be on Metastock on, a, on their YouTube channel. I'm going to be doing a presentation there. And then I'm going to be on Traders Talk next week. And then uh, we got we got a couple of cyber expos coming up also with several speakers. We'll post that up on our upcoming events. So just make sure you guys register for it. Very important you guys do that. And once again, it's a good excuse to get away from the computer. This is when you're supposed to trade. It's time to trade and time's not to trade. So um, go out there and listen in and, 
you know, once again, I'm really looking forward to the Metastock event because I know uh, a lot of people want to have what does day traders think uh, regarding about these markets. So looking forward to that. Good luck, everyone. Happy trading. And we'll start commentating in about 10 minutes. All right. So don't go anywhere. Good luck.